before we can connect to our view desktops we need to create a pool so I'm going to open up a console session to my connection server and I'm going to go to the view admin console now you don't have to do this from the connection server, you can do it from another machine via a web browser but I'm just going to log in to the view administrator and under inventory on the left hand side you'll see there's an entry for pools we don't have one at the minute so I'm going to add a new pool what sort of pool is this going to be? it's going to be a manual pool next and it's going to be a dedicated pool when you connect you get a VM and then you disconnect and reconnect and get the same VM as opposed to a floating pool where when you are finished with your virtual machine it's returned to the pool for the next available user next uh, we're getting our desktops from virtual center which we've already built and it should hopefully detect our virtual center server there it is next now the pool has to have an ID this is as it says on the right hand side a unique name to identify the pool now if you make a mistake you'll see when you click out it's ringed it in red now, it's ringed it in red because I've put a space in it display, uh, display name is what your users will actually see in their client uh, if you do have folders uh, which you'll see in your VI client in, uh, in folders view if you do have any you can put them in a particular folder and there's a brief description that you can put in there to describe the pool okay as I said earlier you see it's ringed that in red because it knows there's a mistake with it and that's because I've left a space in there so if I take that out and click out the box it's now quite happy next pool settings, I'm going to leave everything pretty much on its uh, default with the exception of allow users to reset their desktops if something locks up or whatever you don't want to bring in that help desk just to say my machine is locked up, they can reset it from the view client click next and select a machine to add to the pool, there's our source machine that we prepped earlier next if you want to have a brief review of what you're going to do you can do so and then click finish and that will word away and create your manual pool there it is there now as you can see there's no tick in entitled so even though you've created the pool nobody can use it at the minute before anybody connect can connect to it you need to create an entitlement you need to add in a user or group now, if you watched all the videos you'll know right back at the very beginning we created a group called view users so just find on active directory and it will return view users and we can select that and click OK and after a few seconds we should get a tick under entitled and we do that's us finished on the connection server or in the view administrator so now that we've got our pool we need to connect to it from a client be that a Windows client or a thin client or something running the VMware view client software so I've got an XP machine here I'm going to install, you can see the two versions of the client uh, with and without local mode I'm going to use without local mode I'm just going to copy that locally. For anybody who doesn't know what local mode is, uh, local mode is essentially a means by which your users can take their virtual machine off site, work on it, and sync it back to the network. It requires a special connection server called the transport server. And I'm not a fan of it, to be honest, because I don't think many users have the patience to wait for these things to sync and check them in and out. But if you want to use local mode, simply use the other 
client install software. And there's 32 and 64 bit versions. Quite straightforward, click next, next, accept the uh, end user license agreement. Click next. If you were using the local mode one, you'll see there's another option on there to install local mode. Type in the name of your connection server. I'm going to put the FQDN of my connection server, which is pnl cs.pnllife.com. Next, remember this option. I'm not going to tick it. Normally I would, but I'm, I'm leaving it unticked just for the purpose of the video. You'll see why later. Accept the defaults and click install. As usual, I've sped this up. It usually takes a little while longer. That's it finished. Simply click finish and it will ask to reboot the client. When it comes back up, you can launch your VMware View client. Now, by default, it will be pointing into your connection server because you put that in when you installed it. Um, I'm just going to open the options up. Now, because by default you're using self signed certificates, I usually take the bottom option there, the least secure option, then it won't keep bugging you about certificates. Click OK. Drop that down and click Connect. Now, remember earlier when I said I wasn't going to tick that box? Because I haven't ticked that box, now it's going to ask me to log into view. If I had ticked that box, it would simply log in with the Windows credentials that I was already logged in with, which is probably how you're going to want your set. There's the pool that we created, called Manual Pool. I want to display it as full screen. Select and click Connect. If you have multiple entitlements, you will see multiple pools. And after a few seconds, all being well, we've connected to our view desktop. Just to prove this isn't all smoke and mirrors, if I just drop down to the search room box and do a WinVer in there, remember we were on Windows XP, and we're now running Windows 7. You'll notice on the bar at the top there that you get a few options, anybody who's used to using <laughs> The Microsoft Remote Desktop tool will be familiar with that sort of thing. You can see you can switch desktops, you can switch pools, and switch to other desktops. Send control or delete reset desktop, or essentially restart the machine. Disconnect and disconnect and log off. If you have USB devices connected to um, the client that you are on and you want to connect them to the virtual machine, you can do so in there. I'm just going to disconnect that and log off. And it should return me back to my client's Windows XP desktop. And that's us logged back out, disconnected and logged off. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to come and visit us at www.peatnetlife.com.